Do you wish you could see your Trello boards on a calendar view? With board views, you can. We all love our standard Kanban views, but sometimes you kind of got to mix it up a little bit. And today I'm going to show you how you can do that with board views. Quick shout out to this week's sponsor, Amazing Fields Power Up. Amazing Fields is what the custom fields should be. And I'm going to talk more about them in a minute. Um, but for now, let's dive into these board views. So first of all, these board views let you access your Trello cards and plot them by different sort of points. So for instance, you can look at it in a table if you're missing your spreadsheets. Um, the way you find these views is you click this little arrow right here at the top of your board toolbar called Customize Views. And you're gonna see there's a bunch of different options in here. I'm gonna go through these and, and show you how they work and what they're worth. If you don't see it, you may need to upgrade. And I talk later at the end of this video about is it worth upgrading or not. Um, watch this video first, see if you think you'll find these useful and then we can kind of go for there but select the options that you want. Uh, you can always change these later and add them back or remove them. When you're done, just hit the X here. So how do you know which type of view to use and when? Um, calendar view, let's start there because that's a really popular one. If you're working with a lot of dates and you want to see them plotted on your calendar, then this makes a ton of sense, right? My content calendar is a great example of how I like seeing this because I like seeing what I've got queued up for the week and if anything's missing and what I need to make more with that. If you're more of a visual person and you want to be able to see what's on deck for the week and see, oh, I kind of need to move something around because it's delayed on this, this makes it so much easier to operate with because like you just saw, you can drag and drop and move things around. You can see your checklist items on here, which is really, really cool because if you're trying to have a single view of all of the things that relate to you, you can just click these filters and click me and you're gonna see your checklist items and your cards, everything that relates just to you in one place. So that's super cool. Another cool view, I really like the map view. You'll either not be able to live without this view or never use it, and there's pretty much no in between. Uh, if you're working with any sort of location data, it can be really useful. For instance, I actually used this when I was planning my trip to Dublin, and it was a really great way to be able to visualize how I was getting around, what kind of activities were near each other, and how it made sense to sort of plot out my day. If you're also maybe trying to organize a list of errands or if you've worked some sort of job where you have to do various deliveries um, and you've, you're trying to organize the most efficient path and see what's grouped near each other as you're planning for the week, this view would make sense. Other than that, you may never use it. Another view that I like is the timeline view. And so timeline is really cool. Let me go back to my board over here. Timeline view is really cool because if you liked the calendar view and you work with dates, but you need to see some other sort of dimension with it, timeline is what you want. So for instance, let's say, let me get rid of my filter here. Let's say I want to see all of my cards by due date, but I also want to be able to maybe see who's assigned to what and, you know, see, oh, uh, V doesn't have much going on here. Maybe I can like assign something to her. You can't like quite drag and drop it yet, but you can just click that, pick up the card and then assign it to somebody and then it's going to automatically update in real time. So. You might use this for capacity planning, for instance, if you want to see if anyone on your team has too much going on or too little, or maybe you're trying to you know, look at lists and see the stages of work and see are we starting off the week with too much sitting in to do? Um, is too much sitting in, you know, the in progress sort of status? Uh, you might wanna do something like that. So that's a great way to use that. Next view is the dashboard view. I'm gonna be honest, you probably don't wanna use this view. It's kind of nice if you're looking for some just like quick sort of stats about how many cards are in different spots of your Trello board. But if you're looking for some more robust reporting solutions, you're gonna wanna probably use a power up. You may wanna use dash cards. Um, I'll link to some of those in, in the description. But um, yeah, it's it, like I said, really great for like quick glance. What am I looking at? What do I need to do here? But if you're really looking for a dashboard, you're probably gonna need some like proper power up solutions. Another view I wanna show you, table view. If you miss your spreadsheets, you might love this one. You can sort cards in here by due date, so it kind of gives you the best of both worlds if you wanna see them as rows, but you also want to see what is coming up when and what's due. You might use this for a couple of different reasons, right? Um, you might want to just have a simple view. You don't really care about the, the list sort of structure. You just wanna see cards that meet a certain criteria with all you know these filters you've got on here, then that's great. Um, that's where table view is gonna work really great for you. Something I don't love about these tables is that you can't control the columns. Like this is just what you have with cards, list, labels, members, due date, and you can't add any custom fields in here, but our sponsor, for this video, Amazing Fields actually has a solution for you. So let's check it out. 
So Amazing Fields is a fantastic power-up that lets you create super custom fields on your cards. And so I added, you know, this very this field. I can make text fields. I can make drop-down fields. They're basically what custom fields should be, giving you lots of different options for styling and setting up your fields to look exactly however you want. You can add, you know, conditionals to change the colors of it. You can even calculate fields. You can control who can see what. Lots of great options there. But even aside from that, um, they have a really cool table view. So if you go to the power up and you click this table view, this is a table view that does include your custom fields and you can control the columns here. So if you click this columns button, you can say, oh, I actually don't care about all, any of these. I just wanna see the custom fields and the card name and maybe the labels. Well, now you've got a nice view that lets you do exactly like that. And you can sort by any of these columns, not just the due date columns. And then you can search for something in specific. You can export that if you need to. Um, just really do whatever you need. So if you're like, I like table view, but I need something a little more powerful than what Trello gives me, you might want to check this out. I believe you get up to 10 rows for free and then after that you'll need to pay but it's much cheaper than paying for Trello Premium so I'll talk more about that at the end of this video if you're on the fence about knowing what you should get and not but I definitely think you should check out this power up for lots of reasons including their views. So now that we've covered the main views what are some other sort of things that you may want to do with this? What are things to know? What I like is that from most of these views you can add a card and so let's say you're operating out of any of these views you can just go ahead and add a card and it's you know you don't have to go back to the board view so that's kind of nice. Another thing you'll notice is that this URL updates every time you go to a different view so you can save that um, and bookmark that link so if other people on your team want to be able to see that you don't have to remember each time to go here and click the button you can just save that link and it'll take you straight to that view. This even works on public boards. So uh, I actually have a, uh, I haven't updated it in a while, but um, a Product Hunt's Find board where you can see the different things that I have interacted with on Product Hunt. And again, this is probably not the best example because it's been a long time since I've actually like updated it. But you can see that I am able to actually view my cards sorted like this. It's a public board, so I can share this link with people and anybody can come here and see it in this view. So that's a great sort of way to disseminate information. They don't have to be premium Trello users to be able to view this. So speaking of premium members, to use these views, you will need to have a premium Trello subscription. So is it worth upgrading or is it not? Let's talk about it for a second. Maybe, maybe not. So if you only want to use calendar view, if you've looked at all this and you're like, calendar view is what looks really cool to me, then you can get a free power up that just lets you do calendar view. So from any board you're on, go to power ups, add power ups, and just search for calendar. And you can get most of the same functionality with this power up. So I definitely recommend checking that out. If that's all that resonated with you, no need to upgrade. If you want tables. You're like, I actually didn't care about anything but the tables. The tables looked really cool. Look at the amazing field power up because it is cheaper to pay for that than it is to pay for Grand Trello Premium just for these table views. Again, you're going to get a lot of other benefits with it. And I think there's plenty of reasons that I could wax and wane about why it's great to upgrade to Trello Premium. And I personally like all of these different views. And so I support doing all of those. But if you're really just interested in table view or calendar view, go the power up route. That's what I recommend. If you think you're interested in the others and you're not sure yet, go ahead and try a free trial. Uh, they recently updated all of these workspaces so you can re-enable a 30 day free trial and that should be plenty of time to see if you end up actually using these board views and if you do, which ones are useful. And if after 30 days you're like, wow, I actually came to these boards a lot, then let's have an upgrade party. Um, and if not, well, then now you know and you want to stay up at night wondering, should I have upgraded and tried this out and, and seen if these views were worth it? So another thing that's important to note, you don't have to upgrade everyone in all of your boards to premium to be able to get this. So I'll include a video explaining this more in the video description, but the way Trello pricing works is it's per member of workspace. And so what that means is you could be the only workspace member, but you can still invite people to specific boards. And as as long as they're only on that specific board, you don't have to pay for them. So you could pay $10 a month to have access to all these views and still have, you know, hundreds of people in any of these specific boards that you're collaborating with. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Check out my weekly newsletter all about Trello. And if you have any questions, as always, just reach out.